I get dough I can't get no sleep, please make my life more simple But I wouldn't trade a thing for what I have I go hard, do what I need to make it last They say the good die young, I hope I'm bad Cheers to my past Passed out puppies Passed out puppies You're passed out Stop, but you still want some of that, huh? Okay, buddy. You got all this shit all over your face. Alright, I'll say bye. Over here. Good boy, good boy. Say bye to the people. Yeah, good boys. We got a drive in video. We going duck hunting. I feel like I look like a duck hunter right now with the beard, the shades, and the war hat. We're going, uh, we're going war today. We are playing 25K, no limit hold'em. Just a regular old tournament, you know, no bounties, no nothing. Um, different structure too, a little bit. And I expect to see a, a decent sized field for this one. All right, this is day five. We are approaching the light and it is red. Okay, so five for five, here we go. Oh, now it's green, that wasn't that long though. So we'll count that as a half win. So 25K. No limit hold them. Start with 150k in chips, and the blinds are uh, what is it like? You got you start with 150 big blinds, which is not a ton for typical tournaments. They start you like super deep, which I kind of like because you know it means more play later or whatever the case may be. But I, I definitely like the deep stacked portion of these things. I feel like I said you know previously I've done a lot of work on more deeper stack stuff, um, and I always seem to do well. Well, I, yeah, I don't know. That sounds fucking ridiculous but yeah I, I like playing deep basically um so again there's one re-entry in this thing for those of you that were lucky enough to buy a piece on pocket fives it's important to note if you did buy a piece at no markup by the way that it's on first bullet only so you need to hope that the first bullet goes good but for you i'm showing up right on time it is now 12 the tournament starts at 1 p.m so we'll be ready to go um i think it's eight-handed not sure i would hope so you know for something like this i expect a pretty good field as i said we got i think we're going to get over 100 for 25k which is pretty nuts um and it's a different structure than the other one the other one had 40 minute levels this one has hour levels and today we're only going to be playing eight levels eight hours total and it starts at one so this is a totally new sort of time slot variant normally at the world series poker for many years it's essentially 11 and 3 that's it. This year, there's some 1 p.m. events as well, partly because they're cramming a few more events into the schedule. I believe that they had about four to six days less overall than they normally do. So to get all the events in, you're going to have to like uh, cram them a little bit. But we're excited. I'm ready to play. I feel good about how we've been playing so far. Um, Rudin Dario San Martino today. He's in the final four. And so is Kevin Rapichow. He beat me. He beat Phil Ivey. And he's on his way to the final four. Hopefully Dario can take him out for the team. All right, let's play some poker. Okay, we're playing. We finished two levels just now. Start with 150,000, we have 113. What's up, buddy? How you, do How you doing, Ren? All right. Um, so, hey, how's it going? <laughs> oh, okay, so what the hell are they saying? So we have 113. Now get, get this. I didn't play one single hand until 45 minutes in. And then I raised him to the gun with Pocket Kings and uh, busted Mustafa, who only had like 7K left, unfortunately, with Jacks. So we have 113, which is really not kind of card dead. I don't have a lot of interesting hands, which is rare, because deep stacked, you, you know, you tend, tend to have a bunch. I do, I do got one that I think is interesting enough, and we'll talk about that when we get to uh, my green room. I'm going to go with green room, even though there's nothing green in there. Why not? Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? What else? I'm on the bottom. I don't know. If I forgot, I'll remember and... All right, let's talk about the hand, shall we? We'll do a hand breakdown proper. Okay, first level, the blinds are 1,000, 1,000 with a 1,000 big blind ante. I don't know why they do that. They could do 500,000, but they choose not to. Cool, whatever. So it's folded to me, and I raise to 3,000 from the button because it's a bigger small blind um, with 8-4 of clubs. Okay. Uh, Darren Elias defends his big blind, and the flop comes queen of hearts, 10 of spades, 3 of clubs. So we have nothing. He checks. I elect to go with a 3K size into eight. I decided to, you know, obviously bet my trash here. Totally fine. Sometimes I just give up. Sometimes I bet. 
in this case, we bet with the backdoor flush draw. He calls. Now the turn card is the deuce of club, so we've picked up the flush draw. He checks, and uh, we're pretty deep. You know, we start with 150K or whatever. So this is a spot where I decide to, you know, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to, like, actually fold out a bunch of his range, like all of his 10X um, for the most part, I think. You know, I think a queen's always going to call. And then everything else, like straight draws and stuff like that, he's just going to have to fold. So we bet full pot, 14,000. The river is another deuce, okay? He checks. Now what do you do? So here's the thing, guys. We don't just bluff every single time. Okay, you have to think about good situations when you want to bluff. And in this case, we decided to give up and check. And I'll tell you why. When he calls the turn, right, you can remove, like, he's not he's not getting the right place to call with Jack-9 or even King-Jack. But he may call with King-Jack, so we'll give him that possibly. But Jack-9 is going to fold. A 10 should fold every time. So really what we've done is we've, like, on the turn, because we bet so big with pot size betting, we've uh, narrowed his range down to, you know, Hands that are going to be way too call likely to call. We also, there's a couple hands we get them to fold ten, that we block. 10-4 of clubs, 10-8 of clubs. You can have both those hands, right, theoretically? But no, because we have the 8 of clubs and the 4 of clubs. So those are two hands he cannot have that might fold. So that leaves us with a bunch of queen, jar, queen junk that he can have and uh, not much else. So I decided to give up on this one because I had the 8-4 of clubs. And he had the queen-4 offsuit, which is now known as the Helmuth. Apparently. All right, and that's it. I'm not. I'm not even kidding. There was really nothing else interesting. So I made myself a uh, coffee over here, and um, gonna look to pick. Oh, this is a juicy tournament, guys. I can't believe it. I don't know so many of these players. It's unbelievable. The World Series of Poker has been a smashing success. We're breaking records. It's going to be epic. If you have a chance to get your butt out here, you definitely want to do so. Come out and check out some of the events. There's something for everybody. Is not fair, but that's okay. So that's Maria. She has a pair of aces. This man, just an ace and a king, all in before the flop. And look at that. Look at that. Jack and queen. I these things. I play like this. She's 50. You just tell me if I have any chips after this. How about that? All right. So year one at the World Series of Poker. A little bit of growing pains here. What we got is a situation. There's so many damn players in this thing that they ran out of iPads for time clocks. So for the moment, until we break down enough tables, we're gonna be playing without the shot clock, which is a painful scenario if you have specific players at your table who will take seven or eight minutes. So um, so yeah, hopefully we'll get that fixed for next time. But should, what the, the plan right now is we all hold our time banks and then when we break down enough tables, we will uh, go back to playing with the clock. So, yeah. And look, the line is still growing. There's still more people coming. And we're already at 165 players. This is unbelievable. Where do these people get all, all this money? I thought Bitcoin was down. The market's down, but the money's flying. Let's go. All right, it is end of level four, the very last hand before the break. I'm, I got four hands to tell you about. So let's just run to the uh, green room. We're gonna tell you about all four. They were bloody. And it was annoying because the time banks were no longer, hey, how's it going? We couldn't play with time banks in Byron. Caberman takes a long time, and uh, he did in each one of these hands. I'm going to tell you about all four hands, okay? And then we'll tell you what happened. All right, lots of hand breakdowns. We're ready to do it. This is the this is a very poker heavy episode of uh, the vlog. Okay, we're going to go with hand number one. At this point, I was down to about eighty something thousand, just not really hitting. You know, down about half my stack. Blinds are one thousand, two thousand. Alex Foxen on the button makes it forty five hundred. We're in the big blind with the jack of spades, 10 of clubs. Defend. The flop is jack of hearts, nine of clubs, six of diamonds. I check, he bets 7,000. So that's a, that's a little bit of a larger size, seven into 12. I call. Turn is the ace of diamonds. I check, he bets 15,000 this time. I call. River's the five of hearts. I check, he goes all in. He puts me all in for 55, I think for close to 30 seconds. And then I finally make the call and uh, he was bluffing. He had king high. Uh, and part of what my thought process was there too is I knew he's going to bet that ace. He has to because it's so much better for his range when I call a large size on the flop. But I also felt like, and this could be wrong, but I felt like his sizing on the flop is less likely to be like ace high hands. I just, you know, maybe he's going to... Eh, there's reasons, but I thought maybe that because his size was large on the flop, 
it was less likely to be just some sort of random like a7 kind of hand anyway so we win that one and then we double right so we're back in action let's move on to the next one because they get crazier i open from early middle position with the ace four clubs at 1500 3000 blinds i make it 6500 byron caverman a couple seats over from the cutoff he makes it 18k i've got the ace four suited you know the solver thing so here's the thing i don't four bet very often my frequency is very low so it's important to have some bluffs when you do four bet and the ace wheel card suiteds are the ones that you want to choose typically so i decide to four bet with the ace four clubs to forty five thousand. the flop is he calls the flop is queen queen deuce two spades and a club i go ahead and i'm betting like my whole range here pretty much for small that's just like what you're gonna do so i bet um twenty five thousand into 97.5 he calls the turn is jack of spades and i think at this point i'm pretty much done with it because it's hard for me to have a queen in my hand um you know ace queen type stuff is like really not going to be there so i don't really have a queen much i could have the nut flush which is a real possibility but i don't have a spade in my hand so i'm, ba I'm basically check folding on this card but he checks it back all right now the river's a seven hearts okay well ask yourself this what worst fucking hand am i ever going to show up here <laughs> i'm not so this is when we're going to bluff I had 115k. I left 15k back, and uh, just bet the 100. 15k represents five bigs, and it's a thing people do, especially with big blind Annie. It's worth it. I bet he thinks for a bit. He folds. Okay. Next one is again against Byron Caverman. I open under the gun to 6500 with three of spades, three of diamonds. He three bets again from two seats over to 18k. I call to take a flop. The flop is eight five four, one spade, one heart, one club. I check, he checks back, okay? Turn is a deuce of hearts. And now I feel like I have the best hand and I have a draw and I have all kinds of stuff, right? So I bet 15K and he calls. The river's an eight, so there's about 75-ish in there. And I decide to use a block bet size. I figure he might pay off with ace-king high or something like that. And, you know, if he just has like a some five or sevens or tens, he's just gonna fly. So I save myself something there, right? I bet the 25K for value he raised me to 95k leaving himself 5k back and i thought about this one for a bit because uh having the two threes i mean i block ace three but i don't think he has ace three much because i think ace three bets that flop with the gut shot a lot so i'm not you know so it doesn't really add that much value i don't think he has an eight and checks back that flop with an eight like ever so the problem is is like all right well if he has like an ace king high hand that's like the one he might be turning into a bluff but he's also good enough to just know that my my thin value bet, like I don't have a ton of eights in my range and for that size, he might just be value betting with like aces or kings or queens. So I decided to fold that one. We don't know. And here we go. All right, to the last one, which just happened. Okay. Folds around to me on the button. I make it 6,500 at 15 and three with the king seven, both black, king of clubs, seven of spades. Byron defends his big line. The flop is nine, six, four. He checks, I bet 10,000. A little bit of a big size on this play. He calls. The turn is a 10 of hearts. Backdoor hearts are out there now. He checks, I bet 25,000. Okay, well, obviously I'm bluffing here. It's like one of the worst hands I can ever have. And he calls. And the river's an ace. He checks, I've got about 115,000 behind. So I go ahead and move all in. Go to 115 and he takes uh, three and a half hours or whatever it is because there's no time banks now because they didn't have enough art ipads not saying it would have changed anything but then he finally makes the call and i actually genuinely do believe that the time thing did screw me in a couple in a couple hands with him because he, he's very slow thinker but you know it's okay so he finally makes the call after a long time with two eights so he had a really good hand to call with you might be like wow pair of eights that's actually a good hand because he blocks one of the main hands i'm representing which is seven eight all right so such is life. So, such is life. Add another one. Ding. Okay, so it's 5.30 right now. Um, they're on break. And I'm going to take a little minute here, and then we're going to re-enter. So those of you that are in on the full package, you're still in on the second bullet. For those of you that bought a piece of just me and the daily on Pocket Fives, the second one's on me. You're out. <laughs> been called justin has the pair we have blackjack we were just right. talking about blackjack and i got blackjack so we need an ace or a jack or some stuff like that 
I think it's coming. You guys think it's coming? There it is. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Double up. All right. I was kidding. What did you got? A pair? Mm -hmm. I don't want a pair. I need an ace. Any ace. Okay. Had a good hand. A good for a few flocks, so an ace? Yeah, an it's ace. due. Ace yeah. is due. Let's see an ace. Oh, there's a 10. I need an ace. A 10 will do. Okay, uh, yep, yeah. nope, still, so, ace or 10. Okay, good game. Well, there goes bullet numero deux. The last hand there, I have, what did I have? 30, 35, 35, 36, seven big blinds, whatever. I raise in the cutoff to 11K. The button, who is kind of on the shorter side, flats, and he's an older gentleman who is just never trapping there. And I know my man on the big blind knows that. And he's got a big stack of chips. So he comes with the heavy. He comes with the 50K, right? 10X, and I have like the 190, so I ship it with the Ace-10. And, oh, he had queens, you know? <laughs> I think he's bluffing there a decent amount. So we lost that one, and now it's time for stud, I think. But you know, before that, we're gonna try a trusty restroom right there. And I'll be with you in a second. Okay, here we are in the beloved, you know, my, my, my home away from home. Okay, so yeah, on the walk over here, that's kind of punty what I just did with the ace-10. I think that's a little too loose. It's like not good enough of a hand to probably do that with. Although, like I said, my read was that, you know, this guy's gonna be bluffing here a decent amount and he happened to have queens. Um, obviously against queens, I can still win if I catch an ace. And I wonder, what, I guess if I flat, no, it doesn't matter. If I would have flatted the raise, which is stupid, I would have flopped top pair on that board and went broke for sure. But uh, I probably should just fold. <laughs> so we made a little, probably, I mean, that's the thing. We'll think about it. But like overall, obviously, when you, you don't think about hands like, oh, wow, he had queens. But think about like, all right, my hand is probably a little too light and I have a little too many chips to do that. So maybe I was a little antsy and uh, probably, yeah, punted it off with the ace 10. That's all right. All right. So break time, seven o'clock. And uh, they, you can late reg the stud till 945. So I'm going to take about, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour, you know, decompose or whatever that word is for that. Have myself a, uh, what have I got in here? I'm going to have a, uh, I'm going to have this. Sakara burrito bowl. That's dinner with turmeric corn salsa. Yeah, it looks all right. Okay. So I'm going to do that. Chill for a bit. Uh, and probably think more about my punt with Ace-10. Oopsie. All right, so we tried a nap and it was going well, but I don't know if it's a weekend thing or if it's an everyday thing, but can you hear that? Nice music. <laughs> Not ideal when you try to take a nap, you know? So we're gonna go in now, it's about 9.05. Can late register till 9.45. We'll just play the last 20 minutes, why the hell not? Get situated. Play some seven card stud. Yeah, like I said, this, I hope this is only a weekend thing. Jesse's girl. <laughs> All right, not a lot of updates from this stud. About to go to bro, played about a couple hours. I got it up from 25 to about 30. And then uh, I missed two flush draws. And then on the very last hand, picked up buried queens and didn't improve and lost the kings up. And so we're out. So slow start for us here. We got four events. Tomorrow is going to be action packed. So today we played a lot of stuff, right? With two bullets in the 25K. And then of course we got um, another bullet in the, what's that? Oh, huh? Huh? Do I know you? I don't know. <laughs> you look familiar though. <laughs> How's it going? You good? I was better before you, I saw you. I'm yeah. sorry to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You guys are good. It's all good. <laughs> all righty then. Okay. <laughs> all right. So what was I saying anyway? Um, I'm going to go this way because... Oh, that's kids, right? <laughs> oh what are you doing? Wacko. That's that wacko on the internet. Um, what was I saying? So we played this set. Tomorrow is going to be a big day, okay? Tomorrow is, uh, what do we got? We got the 10K Dealer's Choice at 3 p.m. That wacko, super wacko. I can't even tell you any more about it, but 
All right, 10K, <laughs> six pack dealer's choice. And then also there's a 5K online freeze out and a $500 buy-in with three rebuys. So we will be playing with laptop, late regging those online events. Are you, are you filming me filming myself? All right, cool. I'm gonna hide, I don't want that crazy person seeing which where my room is. <laughs> All right, anyways, y'all, that's the end of this vlog. Peace out.